This is Scotland, and for the last three weeks I've been driving around the southwest corner in my camper van documenting the beautiful scenery Scotland is famous for. Or at least I've been trying to. This country did not want to make it easy for me. In between the battles with the weather, problems with the van and trips to the vet, aside from taking in the sights, I was trying to achieve something else. I'd come up here with a mission in mind. A mission of the furry red variety. A mission which, so far, was proving difficult. In spite of many, many, many hours trying, I'd had one minor success. Today was my last morning in Scotland, and with only a few hours left, I firmly believed I now needed a miracle. Or at least a whole lot of luck. It is half past six in the morning and I found a street light to stand under so you can see me. I don't know if you can see or hear, it is incredibly windy. I'm randomly walking through a street somewhere in Scotland. It's my last morning in Scotland. I've drifted from the street light. It's my last morning in Scotland today. And if you've been following the other channel, you'll know I've been looking for red squirrels. Now I have found one. Got a shot, very pleased with that, but not the best of shots. I have photographed them before as well on Brown Sea Island, so I've got some good shots then, but I've found a new location, and that is where we're going this morning, but I've got a half an hour walk up a hill in the wind, so we'll see you at the top. It's actually a really pretty little high street that I'm walking through. Hopefully you can see some of it. Woo, that is windy though. I've had to come through quite a few dark alleys to get here. Uh, luckily though, with all this gap, I look like a boy, so hopefully, Right, camera down, I'll see you at the top. Jesus! Oh. All right, that is gonna have to do, I'm afraid, folks. So we've made it to the woods. I'm still being a bit loud because I've got a way to go to where I wanna be. But I'm just gonna get my gear set up now before I get there. Photographing wildlife in the woods in low light with a subject such as a red squirrel, which is really, really fast, very small, hard to spot, is probably, for me, the toughest photography conditions there are, especially when it's this windy, because the trees are rustling, which means I've only got sight, because usually when I'm out, I can do a lot with hearing, especially with red squirrels, you tend to hear them before you see them, because of their scratchy little feet, but we're gonna do our best. So I'm getting all this stuff ready now, so that I'm not noisy when I get into position, because the idea behind coming this early is to get there before they do and then be very, very quiet and hope for the best. Ah. I'm rushing because you're balanced on a tree stump and um, I don't want the wind to blow the camera off. Also, apologies if it's very, very grainy. I've never shot in this dark with this camera. It is literally pitch black, so hopefully you can see me and it's not too grainy, but it'll be good to test this camera in really, really, really low light. What am I, oh, tripod. Right, now we have to go and be very quiet. As I got myself into position, I've got to be honest, I wasn't holding out much hope. Photography in these conditions is tough. Trying to spot your subject through all the obstacles the forest presents in the dark and somehow get focus is always a challenge. In the wind, it's even harder, but I figured if this woodpecker could hang on in there with the awful gust, then, well, I probably should too. The red squirrels have been difficult for me on this trip so far, and I'd be lying if I didn't say I had more fouled shots than good ones. If you're gonna attempt to photograph these little woodland ninjas, you can fully expect plenty of red blurs, butt shots, tail shots, an awful lot of misfocus, and filming them, well, that's an even bigger challenge. Sometimes, with wildlife photography, you can do everything right. Proper subject and location research, knowing how to work with the available light, rolling out of bed at 5 a.m., and hours upon hours of patience sitting in the freezing cold, and even then, sometimes, you still need just a little bit of luck. This particular morning, luck was on my side, but it wasn't just Mother Nature and this little fella that was looking on me favourably. My luck appeared in human form too, but more on that in a minute.
okay then, where do I start? What a morning I have had. Where I'm sat right now is where I set up first thing this morning. And I've got to be honest, I nearly knocked it on the head. The wind was blowing a hooli and the trees above me. Now I've been in Scotland a while, I've seen how many of these trees have come down. I was brick, when you're alone in the woods in the dark, you have a lot of time to think. And I was 100% convinced that the end of my life was about to be by a fallen tree while trying to take a picture of a squirrel. However, in my uh, tired, irrational state, I decided that that's a good way to die. So I persisted and boy, am I glad I did because the luck, the luck I've had this morning is beyond uh, describable really. Let me show you what's happened. So you might be wondering how did I pick this spot to go and try and find the red squirrels and to be honest I'd looked online and this place come up and I scouted it out yesterday spent a bit of time up here last night and I could tell this was going to be a good spot because of this. So someone set up a red squirrel hide or wildlife hide whatever you want to call it and it's brilliant the only problem is it's closed or it should be closed now when I was up here last night the guy that runs it owns it looks after it I, I don't know uh, but puts the food out for the birds and the squirrels he saw me sitting over there perched up trying to spot the red squirrel and I got chatting to him, lovely guy, and that was that. Came back this morning and he was back and he very, very, very kindly let me use the hide. So this is pretty much where I've spent about the last hour and a half and for almost an hour we had very regular red squirrels. This has pretty much been me for the last little while and my god I must have had, I don't know, 15, 20 sightings and there's one, one in particular, I'll show you the picture of this squirrel because he, she is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to walk you through my gear that I use for wildlife photography and my go-to settings for wildlife photography because we're getting a lot of questions about that now that I'm posting more wildlife related stuff on both Instagrams and within the YouTube videos on our main channel. So this is my setup. Now it's nothing fancy because I can't afford the big, the big posh stuff, but it's still not cheap nonetheless. So I'm using a Nikon D750 is the main camera body. Now I wouldn't recommend this specifically for wildlife photography. The autofocus is far, far, far too slow. It's full frame, so I don't have as much reach, but it's what I've got and it does me. And then my main lens, this is a Sigma 150 to 600 millimeters, and this is the contemporary version. So it will say C on the end, so this is the cheaper version, so it's not really weather sealed, it's not that robust. However, everything I've taken wildlife wise is taken on this lens, and for the money, yes, it's expensive, but by comparison to the big stuff, it's actually quite cheap. So for the money, it's good enough. So there you go then, this is what I use, this is what I've been using for about the last four or five years. So if you go on the wildlife Instagram, which is just my name, Louise Stockbridge, pretty much every shot is taken with this. There's the odd one that's not, but nearly everything is taken with this kit. Now it's like I say, I'd love to upgrade, but the upgrade I want to do, you're probably looking at about £11,000 for the camera and the lens, and I just have got no chance. So yeah, it does me, it does the job, and that's, that's basically what I've been using. It is heavy, it's a pain in the ass to carry around, but... If you want to get good shots, you've got to put in some effort somewhere. And unfortunately, wildlife photography takes a lot of effort. My go-to settings for wildlife photography are... When I know it's going to be low light, obviously shutter speed is a huge issue. Now, we don't have the luxury of a, like a landscape photographer where we can reduce this right down. Because we're shooting fast-moving targets, we need a high shutter speed, which means you have to, have to, have to use the widest aperture you've got, which on this lens is f5 to f6.3, depending on the focal length. And then what I do with the ISO, the ISO I set to auto ISO, but with a limit on it. So when I first come out this morning, I think I was at 12,800 or whatever the highest is this camera will go. So the camera will choose the ISO depending on the available light and depending on what I do with the aperture and the shutter speed. And then as the light gets better, I reduce that maximum number. So I think now I've got, to set, I've got it set up as maximum 4,000 ISO, which is still pretty high and there's still gonna be pretty grainy shots. I won't really be able to crop in. But again, in the forest, in the woods, especially on an overcast day like today, you don't have the light. So unfortunately, you either have to have a low shutter speed, which is a high risk of blurry shots, which you're gonna get anyway, with, especially with red squirrels, which are very fast, or you have to have a higher ISO. And with a higher ISO, yes, it's gonna be grainy, but at least you'll get the shot that will be sharp and in focus. So that's what I do. And then like I say, I just bring it down as the day goes on. So that's what I normally do, set it up before I come out. Another top tip, always get your settings sorted before you come out. Uh, white balance I have on, <laughs> actually, white balance is probably on a custom setting which I would have used to shoot pictures of me and Emily and AJ the other day, uh, but I'll fix that in post. Uh, metering, I think I've got it on centre weighted metering, sometimes I'll have it on uh, spot metering, so it'll just, uh, what that does is it meters the light, so it will just focus on the subject that you're focused on. 
But to be honest, I don't think if you're just starting out, you need to worry too much about metering just yet. And then focus mode, I have it on single point continuous autofocus. So what that means is I just focus on the subject. So I'll have to either move the camera around or move the focus point around with the buttons to focus solely on the subject. You don't want it on a wide focus because it will try and focus. It might just focus on a random tree off to the left of your shot or something. So single point focus. I also use what's called back button focus. So instead of having the, the shutter button do the focus and the shutter release, I've set one of the function buttons at the back. That's the focus and then the shutter release just does the shutter so I can get focus. It's, it basically separates it. So you've got one button doing one thing and one button doing another thing. So I can pull focus and then take my finger off that and not worry about it if I don't want to and then just use the shutter so I haven't got to worry about focusing all the time. That's something you might not want to worry about when you first get started, but once I switched, once I got comfortable with it, it makes a huge difference for me anyway, especially when shooting like birds in flight and stuff. So there you go then folks, that's just a little bit from me. Uh, these videos on this channel, if I'm gonna be able to make them, they're just gonna have to be like this, just very raw, very unedited, very just to the point, this, 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 and this. I don't have time to concentrate on making really good videos. I'd love to get loads of nice B-roll, loads of fancy shots, me setting up, everything like that, but I have a few hours left in Scotland and my main focus is always on the travel content, which takes, well, the travel alone, if you, look, if you think probably 30 hours a week is driving and finding park-ups and getting water and all those things, and then filming it and editing it on top, that's my week pretty much taken up. So if I wanna get out and do more wildlife photography, which is my biggest, biggest passion, and I do, and I'm gonna bring you along, they're just going to be basic videos like this. And I know uh, they're not going to do well on YouTube and they're not going to kick off or anything like that because they are so basic. But for the people from the other channel that want to know a little bit about this stuff, hopefully you're finding these useful. And there's a jog coming. So on that note, I look like a weirdo talking to myself in a photography hide. So I'll see you guys when, whenever I get a chance to see you next. Bye. Oh, I look like a twat. <laughs>